Unit 8, Day 3, Rhombuses, Rectangles, and Squares. Rhombuses, rectangles, and squares are all specific types of parallelograms. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four congruent angles. And a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four congruent angles. So, these are special things about each of the rhombus, rectangle, and square. But the fact that in their definition it says that it's a parallelogram means that everything that's true about a parallelogram is also true about each of these. So, the, our definition, just a reminder, of a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of the opposite sides parallel. The special properties are that the opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals bisect each other. That means that all five of these things are true for each of the rhombus, rectangle, and square. These are some corollaries about special quadrilaterals. Now, we're going to be using these mainly to prove that a quadrilateral is, in fact, a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. All three of these are given in biconditional form, so remember, that means that the conditional statement and the converse are both true. So this first one, a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. This next one, a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four congruent angles. And the last one, a quadrilateral is a square if and only if it is a rhombus and a rectangle. So that means for a quadrilateral to be a square, it needs to have both four congruent sides and four congruent angles. Here's a theorem about rhombuses. A parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if the diagonals are perpendicular. So again, in addition to all of the things that are true about the rhombus, because it is a parallelogram, something extra is that the diagonals will intersect to make 90 degrees. Here's another theorem about rhombuses. This one says that a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. Now, when you're looking at these diagonals, the fact that a rhombus is a parallelogram, we already know that the opposite angles are congruent. So these angles are congruent to each other. But what's special about the rhombus is that this diagonal is going to bisect each of those so that this angle is congruent to this one and they're also congruent to this one and this one. The same thing happens over here. This whole angle is congruent to its opposite angle because they're parallelograms. But because it's a rhombus, this diagonal is going to bisect the angle into two congruent angles on opposite sides. Here's a theorem about rectangles. It states that a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So again, here's something special about the diagonals and rectangles. For parallelograms, we learn that diagonals bisect each other. So we learn that they cut each other in half. However, for rectangles, the diagonals are congruent to each other. So when they get bisected, each of these four segments ends up being congruent. Now, all of those three properties or theorems that we just talked about, the two for the rhombuses and this one for the rectangles, because a square is defined as a rhombus and a rectangle, all three of those are true for squares as well. Now in this exercise, it tells us that each figure is a parallelogram and they want us to identify the special type and explain your reasoning. So in this, you only want to name one special type, the most specific name you could give to this figure. So go ahead, pause, trace all of these down, and use the information given to you to make your best guess as to what each of these is. Then go ahead and come back, press play, and then you can check your answers with me. In this very first one, we see that this diagonal gets cut in half, and this diagonal gets cut in half. But you need to notice that each of the segments are not congruent to each other. So we only have diagonals bisected. 
then you see that the diagonals are perpendicular. They intersect to make a right angle. So this is a rhombus. In this parallelogram, we have this side is congruent to this one. And we know that opposite sides are going to be congruent because this is a parallelogram. So since we have all four sides congruent, we know this is a rhombus. But then we have this right angle. And we know that opposite angles are congruent because that's a property of parallelograms. And then consecutive angles are supplementary, which also makes these right angles. So this actually has congruent sides and congruent angles. This is a square. In this parallelogram, we just have the right angle. And again, opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So this one is a rectangle. In this one, we have diagonals are bisected, but each segment is congruent. That means that the diagonals themselves are congruent, which makes it a rectangle. But then we have that the diagonals are perpendicular, which makes it a rhombus. So if it's a rhombus and a rectangle, it's a square. In this one, we just have the notation that each of these segments is congruent, which makes the diagonals congruent. So this is a rectangle. In this one, we have these two sides are congruent, but because it's a parallelogram, you know that opposite sides are congruent. The only note that we have is that the four sides are congruent, so this is a rhombus. I hope you got them all correct. In this one, we want to match all of the quadrilaterals with the property that's listed. So for each of these properties, list every single quadrilateral that fits that description. So go ahead and pause, and then try to work this out, and then you can check your answers with me. The first one states that the diagonals are congruent. This is a special property of the rectangle. So because it's true for a rectangle, it's also true for a square. Second one, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. This is a special property of the parallelogram. So it's also true about a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. The third one, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. That's actually the definition of a parallelogram. And that's true for a rectangle, rhombus, and square. All angles are congruent. That's actually in the definition of a rectangle. And that is also true for a square. All sides congruent. That's in the definition for a rhombus. And it's also true for a square. Diagonals bisect the angles. This is a special property of the rhombus, and it's also true for a square. I hope you got all those right. In this next one, it says that MATH is a parallelogram with diagonals intersecting at point O. Identify the type depending upon the given conditions. So we want to take one at a time and consider what type of special parallelogram that is. The first one says that MT, this diagonal, is perpendicular to AH. If those diagonals are per perpendicular, then we know that this is a rhombus. The next one, I'm going to do this in a different color, MA perpendicular to AT. So MA is perpendicular to AT, that's a right angle, and AM is congruent to MH. So, if one angle is a right angle, we know that all of them have to be right angles because opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles supplementary. And then if two consecutive sides are congruent, then we know that the opposite sides are also congruent. This one is going to be a square. The third one says that MT is congruent to AH. So this entire segment is going to be congruent to this entire segment. If the diagonals are congruent, and that's all the information you have, then this is a rectangle. And then lastly, we have that MO is congruent to OT. It also tells us that AO is congruent to OH. Now, because it doesn't tell us anything about these segments related to each other, we have to mark AO and OH differently than MO and OT. If the only information we have is that the diagonals bisect each other, 
then this is just simply a parallelogram. In this exercise, we want to use the theorems about rhombuses to find the measure of each numbered angle. So remember, because a rhombus is a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. Then, two additional ones we learned today about rhombuses specifically, diagonals are perpendicular and they bisect the opposite angles. So let's go one at a time. The measure of angle one what we said about diagonals being perpendicular, angle one is going to be 90 degrees because they intersect to make a right angle. Then, when we take a look at this diagonal, it bisects opposite angles, meaning those two are going to be congruent and these two are also going to be congruent. Since we know that angle two and angle three are going to be the same, and angle two and this angle are going to be the same, I want you to focus in right here to this triangle that we have. It's a right triangle and you know the three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So we have angle one is 90 degrees, this angle is 25 degrees. So if you subtract those from 180, we are left with 65 degrees. Now we said that would be the measure of this angle which is the same as the measure of angle two and the measure of angle three. Now lastly, we want to find the measure of angle four, but if we use this diagonal and it bisects opposite angles, we find that angle four is actually congruent to the angle that's marked with 25 degrees. So the measure of angle four is equal to 25 degrees. Now we found all four angles. So I want you to pause, use the same theorems and properties to find the measures of the numbered angles here. Then you can check back with me and see if you got it right. Hopefully you found that the measure of angle two was 90 degrees, the measure of angle three was 70, the measure of angle one and four were both 20 degrees. If that's not what you got, Go ahead and pause and then look at my work and see if you can figure out where you might have made a mistake. We're given that HIJK is a parallelogram and that triangle HOI is congruent to JOI. So you want to use that information to prove that HIJK is a rhombus. Go ahead and take a minute to pause and then work this out and then check back with me and see if you got the right answer. First we're given that HIJK is a parallelogram. And second, it tells us that HK is congruent to IJ and HI is congruent to KJ. That's a parallelogram property that says that opposite sides are congruent. Then we're given the fact that triangle HOI is congruent to triangle JOI. Then we need to use corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent to say that something is true. Now, these are our three options. If you kind of look at the information we have, this is going to be our best option because HI and IJ are corresponding parts of those congruent triangles. And that allows us to replace HI in here for IJ. Then we get this new congruent statement that says HK is congruent to HI using the transitive property. Now, HI is congruent to IJ, HI is congruent to HK, and HI is congruent to KJ. That means HI is congruent to all three other sides of this parallelogram. So if all four sides of con are congruent, then the definition of a rhombus lets us say that HIJK is actually a rhombus. Hopefully you got it right. I know some of you are rusty on your proofs and we're going to need to keep working through them. Now, if you're in my geometry classes, I want you to pause here and just stop. You're done for today. If you are in honors, I want you to keep going. For my honors classes, I want you to write down this proof and write the whole thing out by yourself, going from the given and to the proof. We're going to go through this in class when I see you next. All right, that's all.